on the next Lifestyle magazine, Attention Deficit Disorder and the Drug Ritalin, the controversy heats up. This is Hello Channel. ADD, ADHD, and Ritalin have quickly become hot issues in schools, doctor's offices, and homes across the country. At an alarming rate, our children are being diagnosed with attention deficit disorder. And the drug du jour for the treatment of ADD is Ritalin, a member of the amphetamine family. In 1998 alone, around 5 million people in America were prescribed this drug. And Americans use about 85% of the world's Ritalin supply. In a moment, Clifton Davis, Patty Cabrera, and today's guests look at both sides of this Ritalin issue. I'm Dan Matthews, and this is Lifestyle Magazine. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Dr. Lawrence Diller is a behavioral pediatrician and author of the book Running on Ritalin. He's one of the leading experts on the treatment of ADD, which stands for Attention Deficit Disorder, and the use of Ritalin. And we're very, very happy he's here. Dr. Diller, how can we determine if our children have ADD or if they're just have a discipline problem. Well, unfortunately, there's no test. There's no biological test. There's no uh, blood test, no brain scan, not even a paper and pencil task that you can take that definitively makes a diagnosis of ADD. Therefore, it really comes down to the opinions of the evaluator. And that depends, and that's one of my points in running on Ritalin. It really often depends on whom you go to see as to whether or not uh, your son simply is uh, struggling a little bit, or I say maybe a Tom Sawyer type, uh, or indeed has a more serious problem that uh, stems from his personality or his brain. Well, we see that America, we read, is the uh, highest user of Ritalin. What, what does that say about, what does that say about our society? Well, it, it, that's complex, and, and in, in a word, we use 85% of the, the world's Ritalin. And that's pretty much most of it. <laughs> that, well, right, and, and oh, really North America, Canada, is the only country that comes close to our use. They use half of ours. And I think it's telling us something about the way we view children's problems in general and how we decide to treat them. And the, the, the notion that ADD is a brain disorder says that this problem must be coming from the children's brain and must be treated with a, uh, a, a drug or a chemical. And, and I see it actually more as an issue of questions of performance, that our, that our performance demands on children have increased while the supports for them and their families and schools have decreased. You think it's because sometimes our children are stressed out because of peer pressure or because of family problems that they may evidence something that resembles ADD? Well, I should say, first of all, there's probably a core group of children, maybe one-tenth, I would guess, of the number being treated that I don't care what environment they'd be in, they'd be struggling. Mm. But the much larger group may become symptomatic and come to the attention of a doctor, possibly because both parents have to work, possibly because we expect more from our children at earlier grades, possibly because classroom size has increased. It seems as if we are so easily to s easily say, well, Ritalin as a solution, instead of maybe the old-fashioned traditional discipline. Well, I, I want to be kind to the families that are struggling with these problems. I'm not disagreeing uh, with you, but, uh, but too often the sounds winds up sounding like parent blaming or teacher blaming. And Lord knows many of these children are hard to raise. That said, I think one of the things that distinguishes our country from many other countries is the way we treat children at an early age. And maybe we tend to uh, give them more freedoms. And yet at the same time, we expect them to conform at school. Too much pressure. Well, it's this mixed message. We want people, America, you know, we want people to express themselves mm -hmm. and, you know, we believe in spontaneity and in, in independence. In other countries like Japan, where the rates are one-tenth to one-fiftieth hours, they expect children to conform at an early age. The group adherence is more important. Mm -hmm. Here, once they get to school, they have to, you know, sit there like this. So do we as a society find a problem and throw a pill at it? Well, I think, again, I think most parents who have come to this 
conclusion about medicating their child, don't do without a great deal of ambivalence. Of course. That said, many uh, families come to me feel like they've already tried everything, and we're talking sometimes as children as young as three, four, and five, and they are ready to use the pill right away. And I say, hey, wait a second, wait a second. Let's take a closer look at the parenting here, or mm -hmm. let's make sure the expectations uh, are, are reasonable for this child. What do we know about Ritalin? We know a lot about Ritalin. Ritalin or Dexedrine has been around for 60 years. We know that it's relatively safe for use in children, though we can't say the same for adults and teenagers because of the risk of abuse. It is a drug like amphetamine or cocaine that can be abused. Long-term? Long-term safety. Mm -hmm. The good news is it doesn't seem to have any dangerous effects when used in childhood. The bad news is it doesn't seem to make any long-term differences if a child uses it in child, child. Oh. It does make a difference on the short term. Mm -hmm. Anyone, child or adult, ADD or not, will improve their performance now, taking the drug. Mm -hmm. when, when we come back, I, I really want to talk to you and the families about how one sees, well, how one sees treating a child with attention deficit disorder with essentially an upper, okay? Sure. Uh, because it seems to me that ADD would evidence itself by a kid who's pretty much bouncing off the walls or, or just not being able to focus. Not necessarily these days, and I, that's a big confusion. We're going to talk about that. When we come back, we'll meet a family who was told that their child may have ADD, and they challenged the notion and consulted Dr. Diller and their story right after this. <laughs> Looking for a brighter future? Learn English and make it happen on Hello Channel. Brandon Davis is seven years old. Earlier this year, his parents, Scott and Katie, were told by Brandon's first grade teacher that they should have Brandon evaluated for ADD because he was out of control in the classroom. His parents were skeptical, decided to visit Dr. Diller. Welcome. Katie, I guess I should ask you, he wasn't out of control around the house, was he? Well, no, I wouldn't describe him that way. No, you're a mother. Yeah. How would you describe his behavior? Well, I would say a typical six-year-old at home. Mm -hmm. you, know, you may have to ask him a couple times to do something, but I don't think that's anything unusual. Did Nothing you... out of the norm. No. Yeah. Well, were you surprised by the teacher's analysis? Or... Absolutely astounded. <laughs> what was her definition of out of control? What was he exhibiting? Well, I don't know if it was out of control that she used. It was more that he was in his own world, hmm. not with the rest of it, the rest of the world in the classroom. Sounds like a leader. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon, you look okay to me. You feel okay? Yeah. <laughs> You're fine. Mm -hmm. um, did you feel that you were a little out of control in class, Brandon? Not really, huh? Nope. You're just trying to do your work, huh? <laughs> Scott, how did you feel about that analysis? I, I think she was more in tone that he wasn't with, as she put it, with her. Um, oh. As she's teaching a classroom, you know, all the kids are sitting there with their eyes just gazing upon her, and Brandon was kind of just... Somewhere else. Yeah. Not and gazing upon well, her. Well, every <laughs> child has a different learning style, so mm -hmm. maybe it was, you know... See, the mama in you starting to defend that That's baby. Right. Go right. ahead, That's wrap your I, arms around. I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to know, what did you do when you had evaluation recommended to you? What did you do? Well, we told her that we would like to do everything on our end to help and that we would get him evaluated because she requested us to, um, but that we didn't feel that was the direction that we mm -hmm. would really be going in and that we would rather work with him on a daily basis on behavior modification, mm -hmm. as you might say. And You went to see Dr. So Diller? We did. Mm -hmm. uh, he was recommended to us uh, by Scott's sister, who's a marriage and family counselor. And uh, he was well known in the community and I believe across the country for the subject of ADD. And so we felt he would be the best. So what was your evaluation, Dr. Diller? Uh, with, with meeting Brandon, and, and seeing what a capable student he was and seeing how well his parents handled him within my setting because we all met together and we talked and played, I had some serious questions. And I asked the teacher also how she was operating in her classroom, some of the things she used to keep the children on task 
and, and, and disciplined. And what I felt was she was relying a little bit too much on maybe the thinking approaches and not with the, the more immediacy of a reward or a consequence. Tactile now, approach. She, she was no more that, you know, we need this complete in 15 minutes and then we'll move on to the next thing. Otherwise, you're stuck here. And, 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 and she would say, she would try uh, more, it's time, it, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think how, how she did it exactly, mm -hmm. but she wasn't either forceful enough or immediate enough with her rewards and sometimes a consequence too. Mm -hmm. And that was really where we steered her. Now this is a very capable teacher, but she had gotten the feeling somehow that perhaps this boy had ADD. How did you go about uh, treating uh, Brandon? How did you address the problem? Well, I saw really how capable the, the family, family was. And really, the main thing here was reinforcing their parenting style, which was they used a lot of humor, but they were also forceful when they needed to be. I have, did you find that he had ADD? No, I can't really say. Again, it's a matter of opinion. The teacher was concerned, and they came to a doctor who felt this was Tom Sawyer again mm -hmm. uh, on some level. This but was, did you finally prescribe Ritalin? No, I, ne I never thought that Ritalin was going to be. But you can imagine how many... Um, parents hear this from a teacher, they go to another kind of uh, evaluator who mm -hmm. perhaps sees this kind of performance problem as a, as a sign of ADD. Well, that's good. And to it's know. often the easiest thing to do, too. Well, up next, a mom who chose to use Ritalin for her child. We'll find out how well it worked in two minutes. This is Hello Channel. Come learn English as you watch TV. It will change your life. Paola. Sí, mamá. Ven acá, por favor. I don't know how my mom knew. But I guess moms always know. I wasn't being very nice to one of the girls at school. I knew it was wrong. I knew I wasn't supposed to be mean. I guess I didn't think it was a big deal. But in one sentence, my mom helped me understand. She said, Mija, you need to treat others the way you want to be treated. I thought about that a lot. I still do. Life's most important lessons are best learned in the home. A message from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Sheila Bose's adopted son, Kevin, is six years old and is full of intensity. So much intensity, in fact, that Sheila and her husband, David, were overwhelmed at first by his personality. Well, after numerous complaints from Kevin's preschool about his behavior, they turned to Dr. Dillard, who recommended they try Ritalin. Thank you for joining us, Sheila. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, your son, Kevin, had different kind of, uh, a different kind of display than the last young man we spoke to. Tell us about your son. If my son had been here, he would have been running all over the stage, for starters. <laughs> he is um, a very intense little boy. If he found something that interests him, he will, he'll be very interested in it, intensely interested. He'll be fiddling with it. He'll be playing with it. Uh, to the point where nothing could distract him from it. And so, with that kind of intensive attention, mm -hmm. why do they call it attention deficit? It's a big problem. I think I should answer that. Yeah. The name of this problem keeps on changing. They used to call it hyperactivity. Now they call it attention deficit because of the kind of kid we just saw before, Brandon. That kid has become included under the rubric. What they call the holy trinity of ADD is inattention, distractibility, and impulsivity. However, some of these children, on things that they like, concentrate fine. And people say, well, how can they call it attention deficit disorder? So give us some of the core features. Well, the problem is we can talk about Kevin. The problem with Kevin is despite excellent parenting coming from Sheila, Sheila was that kind of parent who would be right on top of her kid with love, too, that Kevin still would have trouble sticking with things he was supposed to do and complying when it wasn't something that wasn't immediately rewarding to him. And so in this case, in this case, now it sounds like a bad boy too, but you didn't get that feeling from Kevin. You really got the feeling that this was something more internally driving him that had nothing to do with emotions. It's just very hard for him 
not impossible, but very hard for him to do things that weren't immediately rewarding. Did Ritalin help? Oh, it helped immensely. I was very reluctant to put him on Ritalin. It took us about nine months after the diagnosis to start using Ritalin. But it made an immediate difference in his life, in our lives, in his school life. In what way? What were the uh, differences? Mm -hmm. his, um, his ability, it seemed like his ability to be in control of himself, to be more aware of his surroundings and the people who he was interacting with, uh, to respond to them in a timely manner without two or three or four or five uh, reminders to do things. Um, so it doesn't interpret it in, uh, in a way of disobedience, necessarily. You ask him to do something. He just would not have the ability to, th he'd be thinking about something else totally at the time. And he could hear you ask to do something, and he will just not do it. And you'd think that's disobedience. It wasn't. He just couldn't focus on something yeah. else. Hmm. Uh. You know, I, I have a couple of kids, and you know, as I was raising them, I, I would ask them to do things, and over and over they mm -hmm. wouldn't do it. And finally, after years, they did, and I thought, that's growth. Mm -hmm. that's, that's maturity. And these kids do get better. Yeah. Uh, they do get better. But it's important, therefore, that in the midst of an ABD evaluation, that one time someone meet with the family. Because very often, the most useful thing the doctor can do is counsel the parents into taking a more immediate and firm stance with these children. In 30 seconds or less, can you tell me why you chose Ritalin to prescribe for this child? Because I saw for this individual's child after working with the child and the family and the school, that this would ease this child's suffering. Yet on a, on a, on a bigger level, I have to worry as a citizen for the amount of Ritalin we're using as a country. Well, that's very yeah. important. And, and we're trying to talk about easing suffering. We still have more. Don't go away. <laughs>that's right, I said hello. I'm talking about an exciting new television channel that will change your life. My name is Ruth and I want you to be one of the first to know about Hello Channel. Hello Channel is designed to teach you to speak English. Anyone can learn. We offer something for everyone. You'll see programming for children, teenagers and adults, all on different levels. With Hello Channel, you'll hear see, read, and speak English as you're watching entertaining television programs, making it easy to learn. If you've always wanted to learn English but haven't had a chance, Hello Channel is perfect for you. Start today and remember, for a brighter future, just say hello. something really fun to do, I'll stay home tonight. Okay? Okay, okay. Annie, could you get that? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm not gonna make it tonight. It's a bad hair day, so. Give your family everything. Looking good. Give them your time from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And we're back talking about ADD and Ritalin use. And Katie and Scott have rejoined us. Now, with your child, with Brandon, you opted not to use Ritalin. So you had some sort of alternative uh, medication or treatment. Well, no, we, we never even considered actually using medication on our son. Um, that, that just wasn't an option in our mind. Mm -hmm. So we, we got the evaluation done for ADD just for the school to tell them that we're doing everything on our end. Now you need to do what you need to do on your end. And so behavior modification was done more through uh, not giving him any excuses for not behaving properly mm -hmm. or not doing things right away. Um, it's the asking the once, maybe twice at most, and then, you know, that's it. So. Dr. Diller, 
What alternatives are there? Well, these are often chronic problems of complex cause. And so people are attracted. You keep on asking me, well, how to, what is That's this? That's right. I want to know. And everyone out there wants to know this also. But, you know, particularly uh, people are interested in, in, in diet and herbal treatments and stuff like that. And unfortunately, virtually all of them have not been proven to be useful for the children like uh, Kevin here. And we stick primarily with behavioral approaches along the line of, of what we do with, for Brandon. And then we rely on the stimulants primarily. So behavior modification yes. as well as sometimes and, and, and medication. Making sure there's no learning problems because that's very, very common here and working closely with the school and the family. Mm. Dr. Diller, ADD is supposedly a brain disorder. What about the neuropathology of it? Well, there are tantalizing brain scans and there are studies on genes that also link specific genes to this problem, but nothing is definitive yet. And remembering again, that even a genetic condition is defined by the culture and the society. We expect more from children, and we're offering them less to their families and their schools. And this creates what I call more a living imbalance rather than a chemical one. Pressure on kids, and maybe not allowing them to be kids. Sometimes that, that would do it, huh, Ben? I want to ask one more question as we're going out here. What's the role of love? What role does love play? My, my opinion is that you have to be incredibly more demonstrative of your love for the child in order to help in, you know, keep the child feeling good about themselves. Mm -hmm. Katie, Scott? I like the firm but fair approach you know, and be consistent. Mm -hmm. um, consistent. Yeah, it's just uh, you know, letting them get away with Murray just can't, uh, it's unacceptable. And, and, you, and love is important, but I'm not sure if love is enough when handling a more difficult temperament child. Mm -hmm. well, We'll be right back with the final word. Learn English and have fun on Hello Channel. A very challenging topic touching lots of us. And I really appreciate all of you being here to talk about it. Scott, I've got a question for you. Okay. Um, is Brandon anything like Scott was at six or seven? <laughs> um, I, I think so, yes. I've been told so, at least. So he's a great kid who's got a great future then, isn't he? Yes, he is. Thank <laughs> you. Okay. Dr. Diller, we do have parents, though, who are at best devastated at what happens in their families, and at worst, they fear ultimate destruction. Hope for them. Hope for them. Ah. Yes, I think that actually as the children get beyond the age of uh, uh, high school age, many more opportunities open up for them and they can use their talents. They're not going to be having to sit there for six hours and they can do much better. So just remember that there's hope for all of us if we'll take time to live together. And that's what a family needs to do. And that's what we try to show on Lifestyle Magazine. Thanks for being with us and we'll be back here next time. Bye now. <laughs>